In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how we go about saving a life. Now, if you look throughout history, there's heaps of amazing stories of people who have saved lives. Um, if you speak to a Christian, they'll say Jesus saves. If you speak to um, a random um, on the street who's got hit by a car, they'll say the paramedic saved. Or if you speak to some of the soldiers in World War II who were stranded in the, you know, in the battle zone, some will say it was the US commandos that saved us. So throughout history, there's been people who have saved lives. And what I love most about uh, the story of salvation, uh, uh, that is saving a life, is that the people that have done it, the people that go put their lives in danger, uh, is kind of a clue to what is required to be a person who saves someone else's life. And you know, one of the greatest people I've ever encountered suggested that um, whenever you're wanting to save a life, that uh, you go vulnerable. You go vulnerable into a situation that you can't possibly fathom. You go vulnerable and you um, are putting yourself in danger, in harm's way, with a risk and chance that it's impossible, a chance that it may not work, a chance that it's um, going to blow up in your face. And when you think about these stories of people who have gone to extreme situations to actually save a life, you can see that that's more often than not what's happened. They've had to risk it all to save a life. Paramedics every day, the police officers, the fire brigade, they have to risk something to save something. And, you know, the person I encountered a long time ago risked their life so that uh, we too could be saved. And uh, to save a life is an interesting topic because for me, uh, the idea of, of saving a life is not just about taking someone out of danger. It's about um, empowering someone to be who they were made to be. So, for example, paramedic saves a life, but it's the doctors and it's the nurses and then it's the physios and then it's the, um, you know, all the other um, specialised services that come post the accident that actually help someone recover. So I think, yes, there's a point of salvation where you need to go and be vulnerable. You need to go into a situation that uh, is not guaranteed to be successful. But unless you're prepared to make an effort to go into that situation, will a person be saved? You know, that person I was telling you about before that was talking about being influential and uh, on my life, the person was actually Jesus. And what, what you believe about religion or not is, is up to you. But just hear me out for a minute. Jesus actually said to his disciples, go into the village where I'm about to go and find a person of peace. That is a person who will welcome you, a person who is open to you, a person who perhaps um, might even need you that day. He's, so he says, it doesn't give specifics. He just says, go find a person of peace. And then he says, stay with that person. And then he says, eat and drink whatever that person gives you. So he's basically saying, going to a town, he says, don't go with anything. Don't go with any money. Don't go with any resources. Go find a person, build a genuine relationship with that person and accept them for who they are. Eat the food that they give you. Drink the drinks that they give you. Show them that you think that they're valuable. Show them that they're precious to you. And in the act of you going and treating a person like that, Jesus says, it's a per it's, it is salvation. It is saving a person's life. He models this with the story of Zacchaeus. If you read the story of Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus is an outcast because he's ripped, up, he swindled all these people and ripped off many people of you know so much money. But then Zacchaeus had heard about this guy who was uh, unbelievable, who, who 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 was just amazing, and so Zacchaeus wanted to meet him. And uh, Jesus said, "Well, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house today." Jesus took a risk right there and then. He took a risk. He took a social risk because all the people around him would go, what the heck are you thinking? Why are you going there? 
And you know what? Jesus went, not only went to his house, he ate at his house. He drank at his house. He, uh, he honoured Zacchaeus with his presence. Now, that is an amazing example because at the end of that, Zacchaeus was so blown away because he was accepted and loved that his life changed. And, you know, Jesus tells us to do the same in Luke 10. Now, you're going, oh, this is all very religious. I'm not, this is not about religion. This is about life. And it works in reconciliation whenever there's a problem, whenever there's a drama. You know, he says, go vulnerable into that situation. You're not having all the answers, but you're going primarily to listen and accept their hospitality and um, then it goes on to say, heal them. Heal them and be gracious to them. So it's, it's a bit of a bizarre concept that to save a life, you have to put one in, in danger. You have to be prepared to put your own life in danger. It's the same in marriage. It's the same in any relationship. If you want to overcome a problem, you have to be prepared to put yourself in danger to confront the situation. Now, I'm not uh, talking about domestic violence or anything like that. I mean, if you're getting belted or beaten up by your partner, I'm not saying go walk back into that situation. What I'm saying is if there's a problem, it has to be confronted. And it has to be confronted in grace. It has to be conf confronted nicely. And, and you, we must treat each other as human beings. So if we want to save a life, we have to be prepared to lay down our lives. We have to be prepared to lay down our agendas, to lay down our, our biases, to lay down you know, it, our fears and actually be prepared to build relationships. So as I said, this applies to reconciliation. This applies to if you've got um, other cultures living in your community that, that we don't understand. If we, uh, we have strange behaviour by people, you know, at, in, in an Australian context out here in the country, if we were to see um, a, a Muslim praying three or four or five times a day, people would go, that's bizarre, that is unusual. But the reality is, it's only bizarre to us, it's not bizarre to them. So for us to understand them, we need to be able to go vulnerable and build a relationship with people to get to know them. The same with, um, you know, homosexual community. If, you know, if we are being brought up to think a certain way about something, it can affect our views. So if, if we find someone in our community who is uh, transgender or, or um, homosexual and we just go, oh, I'm a bit scared because this is a bit unusual and it's easier just to push people away rather than build a relationship. The Bible says, or Jesus says, go vulnerable, build a relationship. Go and save a life by being vulnerable. Not going with all the answers, going vulnerable, accepting the other person for who they are. Eat and drink whatever they give you. Hope this has been helpful. This is not all the answers, but if you've got any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. I'm not here to save anybody. I just know that our role as human beings is to love one another and to go vulnerable and to be prepared to put others before us. And when we do that, we actually truly start to discover, we truly start to discover who we really are. And that is an amazing humanizing experience as well. I'm Peter from the Salvation Army.